Once the machine's been assembled and you want to use it, check to make sure your work area is clean. And I'll use the blade initially that came with the machine. It's this one in here and it's a pin blade, which means it's got pins on it and fits in to the housing that's already attached to the arm of the saw. Check the blade tension. To tension the blade off, release the cam at the back and you'll hear no tension. If you turn it a quarter anti-clockwise and release it, you'll notice the tension isn't as much. Release, increase by a quarter of a turn, put the cam down and you get a nice high note. So what you want is you don't want the blade to be so taut that it's going to snap but you don't want it to be so loose that it's going to buckle when it enters the job. I've drawn a line here and a bit of scrap that we can follow. And make sure the blade's in the right way so the teeth are pointing down so it cuts on the downstroke. And then lower the workpiece hold fast foot, either just on or just above your workpiece. So it moves freely, but it doesn't flap about. Normally I would put the blade guard down now that keeps the dust away from me and also saves me from getting my fingers near the blade. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to have it up. Be careful when you lift it up, you don't kink the air hose at the top here because you need the air pump to clean away any sawdust as you're cutting. Turn the light on if required. Make sure everything's secure, there's nothing in your way. If you've got it connected to a dust extraction system, Put the dust extraction system on now, then turn on the machine. Introduce the material to the blade and allow the blade to do the cutting. Don't force the blade. This is a variable speed, so I can increase the speed if I need to, or I can decrease the speed. You'll find something that works best for you. Turn off the machine, and there's your first scroll saw cut. That's cutting with a pin blade. A pinless blade you cut exactly the same way, only the setup's a bit different. These two pieces here are the pinless blade holders. To set your blade up, on the top of the machine are these two recesses, and the blade holders conveniently fit in there. Using the right Allen key, get one end of the pinless blade and insert it into the blade holder and tighten the Allen key down. Try and get them so the blade itself is central in the hole of the blade holder. Place that into the recess on top of the machine, loosen off the set screws on the other one and then slide the other end of the blade into the blade holder and make sure it sits in that housing. Once again try and keep it central. The best way I've found to do that is if you have the allen keys or the, the set screws poking out equidistant generally means that you're pretty well in the middle. Nip them up. Now your blade is ready to go onto the machine. Loosen off the tensioner. Press the cutting arm and remove the pin blade. To fit the pinless blade, first of all, orientate it so the teeth are pointing downwards, so it's going to cut on the downstroke. Raise up the workpiece hold down. Take out the work table insert. 
making sure that the teeth are pointing down and pointing to the front, hook this bar under this lip here. Like so. Depress the top arm of the saw and hook this bar over this lip. If it won't go, check to make sure that this area between the bar and the hole is clear and you haven't got a bit of saw blade poking through like that. That's the number one reason it doesn't line up. Replace the table insert. Then tension the machine. Till you get a nice high note. And the pinless blades, now ready to use. Same as before. Draw a quick pattern. Bring the tool rest down to the job. Have that guard down, but in case of this demonstration, I'll have it up. Then you're ready to cut. Turn the machine on. Present the material to the blade and slowly move forward. Turn off the machine, raise the workpiece, hold fast, and there's another cut. Using the rotary tool, get the rotary cable, take off the dust cap, put it somewhere safe, screw on the housing, making sure that the drive cable is located squarely into the drive dog. Select which tool or bit you want to use. Loosen off the chuck. To tighten, use the right angled bar. Turn the collet until the bar slips in and you'll feel it locate positively. And then with the spanner, tighten the collet up and that will hold the sanding sleeve in place. Remove the locking pin. Pick up the piece of work you want to work on. Now you can either use the machine with the main switch or if you're doing a lot of intricate work you might prefer to use a foot switch which gives you two hands to control your job whilst you can control the on off with the machine using the foot switch. So if you've got some intricate pieces you're doing, you might need to stop and start a little bit. That's where the foot switch comes into its own. I highly recommend too, if you're using a rotor cutter with any material that makes dust, make sure you've got a dust mask on. Once finished, you can leave this in the bit if you like, or take it off, put it back in the toolbox. Disconnect the cable from the machine, put it up on the wall or put it in a drawer of your workshop so you know where it is next time you need it. Remember to put back the dust cap and that keeps it clear and clean so it won't bind or catch once you use it again. A couple of bits of maintenance that can be done every 50 hours. Turn the machine on its side, remove these rubber caps one there, one there, and just drizzle in some 20 SAE motor oil and let it sit overnight. The next day, clean the excess oil out, replace the covers, and then turn the machine over and do the same thing on the other side. Remove the two plugs, put in the 20 SAE motor oil, let it sit overnight, wipe off the excess, replace the plugs. Keep the machine tidy at all times. Wipe it down from time to time with a rag to get rid of any excess buildup of 
wood, wood sawdust or glues or gums or whatever it is you're using. It's always good to have a little bit of candle wax and from time to time just rub it over your table like that. It helps protect the table and also makes it much easier for your work to slide on the table. Well, that's about it for maintenance. General safety operation, obviously keep the guard in place, keep your fingers away from the blade itself. Keep the cables nice and tidy so you don't trip over them. When doing a visual inspection on the machine itself to make sure everything's safe, the first thing I always do is remove the plug and check to make sure it's in good condition. Two reasons, number one, once I've removed the plug, I've turned the power off and taken the plug, put in the power source, and the machine is now safe for me to work around. Check to make sure that all the tangs of the plug are straight, the cord isn't frayed or chipped or exposed in any way. The same with the foot pedal, make sure it's totally covered with insulation and everything's nice and working and not gummed up with timber. And that wraps up the tutorial of the SS400H scroll saw from Carbotech. And may you enjoy many, many years of good, creative and fun woodworking.